<laughs> Hello, Diana. Can you hear me? <laughs> Hi, John, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, I can hear you good. Hi, John. You got, how you doing? You have your camera on. Hi, John. Can you hear me? Yeah, there you are. Uh, okay. Hi, John. Okay. Do you want to you want to work for Neurosurgical TV tonight? Yeah, but um. I don't know if Noe told you that both of the pon the ponies are going to be in the auditorium. Okay. So he was going to present them. Okay, but I want you to introduce Noe. Can you do that? Ah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Of yeah, course. just say you're Diane Ochoa from Neurosurgical TV. Yeah. Uh, you'll work for us one, one night. Yeah, any time, any night you want. No, okay, no. Uh, it's good that you're part of it. You know, I want you to feel like yeah. you're part of it. And and basically, uh, hi, I'm Diana. I'm a student. Da da da. Uh, and and explain what we're doing, what Noah's doing, okay. and then, you know, he's doing the uh, you know, Premier uh, Curso uh, International. Yeah, explain what he's doing, and then introduce yeah. him. Okay, sounds good. I'm sure I'm sure you know it backwards and forwards what he's doing, right? Yeah. Yeah, and then uh, and then after that you just referee the fist fights. Okay. The fight, any fighting you have to you get in between them. Okay, sounds good. Oh, so you're sitting down now. Are you in the auditorium? No, not in the auditorium. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, it doesn't matter where you are, anyways. Uh, yeah. So good. Uh, how's school going? Go. It's going great. I'm. I'm thinking about being over there at the auditorium with Noe the first um, Thursday of September. No, the first day of October. Sorry. What are you gonna do? Um, I'm going to be visiting the neurosurgery labs over there. Oh, okay. Okay. And uh, Noe works in the labs? Yeah. Okay. It's at the hospital. Oh, it's everything. a one-month rotation? Um, no. Well, actually, it's it's like rotations, but with um, Quetzal, uh, Dr. Bertrand, he gave, I think it was the third Thursday, a speech. Mm -hmm. And he's like my he's my mentor for everything. So and and, and his, um, name in again, his, name, his name again is he, yeah, it's Jesus Quetzalcoatl Beltran. Okay, Beltran. So he gave a lecture. Yeah. yeah. And okay. he's an attendee over there at the General Hospital of Mexico in neurosurgery. Oh, okay. Okay, uh very good. I haven't been down in Mexico okay. for a while, but a year, a year and a half. Oh, okay. I hope you come soon. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. My brother goes down there all the time. He and his wife, because his girlfriend, his daughter's uh, in Mexico City. So they, they visit there a lot. They may get a place there. They may get an apartment there. Oh, okay. That's yeah. good. In Mexico City. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That, that sounds really good. Yep. Then hope you you do visit us sooner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's not far at all. It's like three hours from Miami. I feel even less. Okay, yeah. Diane. What I'm going to do, Diane, just I'll go ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, yeah. one. After I do one, then you start when you want to start. Then you hi, I'm Diane. Okay. Yeah. The next time we'll get you a banner for the background, but it's no big deal. All right. Sounds good.
I can look for a spot that's um, maybe here. Okay, there. It's a nice background. It's an old building, stucco brick. Is that stucco brick? No, it's like a Mexican color, you know what I mean? The color of uh, oh, you we're losing your audio there, Diane. I can't. I can't okay, hear can you. Can you hear me? Yeah, now it's okay. Okay. So. So there's three speakers tonight, right? Yeah, Noé, Doctor Carrillo, and Doctor Navarro. Both, oh, okay. um, both of them, Doctor Carrillo and Doctor Navarro, from the General Hospital of Mexico. Oh, okay. So they don't know how far to go, right? Yeah. That that auditorium is it in good use all the time? Like it's used most of the day, or just once yeah, in a while? It, no, yeah, it is um, used most of the day because it's the general auditorium of the hospital. Okay, so a lot of people use it. A lot of people use it yeah. for lecture. Exactly. They must have all the internet connections. They must have everything. Yeah, exactly. They 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 have to have everything. Yeah. Well, Mexico, as you know, was kind of rough on the internet a couple of years ago. You remember how bad it was with yeah. the Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi? And still some places you don't get really good Wi-Fi. Really? Even in the like in the hospital, you don't get very good coverage. Oh really? and in the university, it's difficult to get good Wi-Fi. Is there any way around that? Do you get your own account or there's no way around it? No. Yeah, well, you, I mean, you get the Wi-Fi, like, not Wi-Fi, but you, you, like, buy, um, like, internet access or just, like, um, link your phone to your laptop and stuff like that. And just use, yeah. like, general, the phone coverage. Yeah. People coming in late. Yeah. As, as and usual. I'm I'm Noe has Noe talked to you? Not yet. Okay. Is there something special you want to say? No. Um let me change the screen here. We've had a lot of this weekend we had six. Webinars, seven actually. It's a tight schedule. Yeah, that's good. Well, you know, you know, really I, you know, I I'm probably like you. I like working a lot. I, I like yeah. You know, when, when you work a lot, the day goes by. You know, and it's and it's nice. I like it. And, yeah, you know, exactly. It's it's really nice. Medicine's yeah. like that. To Medicine's be like that. Medicine's like that. You know, you just keep going. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting stuff. So. Yeah, it is. And plus, it's something that we enjoy a lot. Yeah. So it just makes it, it makes life easier. Yeah, we just had a nice it. lecture with Argentina Grand Rounds with uh, an Argentinian old guy that I know, uh, Dr. Uh, Roberto Herrera. Uh, yeah, oh, okay. it was very, ple very pleasant, very pleasant. We're going to try to make that a brand Thursday night as the Argentina night, you know, Grand oh, Rounds okay. night, because uh, I mean, you guys have the night too, but yeah, uh, Thursday's like Noe. I said to Noe, Thursday's a good night. You guys have picked a good night. There's not many other mm -hmm. people competing against you guys, you know. Exactly. There's you know weekends there's lots. Friday Saturday yeah. is full, uh, and sometimes it's tough to get attention. In, uh huh. Now, who's is anybody anybody coming in the panel? I gotta recognize the names, right? Can you write the well, names? Okay, the, the lecturers. Yeah, well, obviously. only. Oh, well, they're gonna be there. Know, the, the, the two lecturers yeah. gonna be there. They're gonna be yeah in the auditorium. And for example, for the panelists, Takashi and Marco, if they come in. No, no, he's gonna be there too, right? Yeah, no, so, he's gonna so be there too. So all the speakers will be there. 
yeah, every, everybody's going to be over at the auditorium. Yeah. Okay, and we got the names. I got to admit the speakers, obviously. Oh, no, no, you just said they're in the auditorium. Okay. You see my attention span like a rabbit. No, I didn't. Do it. So, um, I, I only introduced briefly Noe, huh? Because he's right, going to he, he okay, because he is going to be introduced in the auditorium. Uh, well, I, otherwise, I don't, people don't know what my webcast is doing. Yeah. Uh, so, I will just, you know, well, I just can, ask just, Noe to give us a little a couple of like 20 second lead time so you can introduce. Yeah, him, and then he they can do what they want. When once we turn yeah. over, they can do whatever they want. Just leave it go. Okay. Well, maybe introduce who's so, going to introduce Noe. Then maybe we'll introduce the person who's going to introduce Noe. Who's going to introduce well, him? Well, I'm. You know? No, not yet. He he doesn't answer. I already asked him, and I told him that I'm going to just briefly introduce him. Okay. Well, we'll talk about so, it when he gets him. We'll talk about it. Yeah. I mean, if it comes down to it, just we'll just start when he starts. That's fine. It's no big deal. Yeah. No, are you, are you there? Look at this, Diana. Oh, so Noe just sent me a message and okay. he says that they're having problems with the audio and the video. Okay. 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 So we'll, we'll wait a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah sure. Let me let me show you uh Diana what the uh, we had six, six webcasts, actually seven this weekend. Okay, we had the Argentina Grand Rounds. You can see this, right? Yes. Argentina Grand uh, Rounds. And now we have yeah, we have this yeah. lecture uh, after mm -hmm. that. And tomorrow we have Venezuelan Grand Rounds at 6 o'clock <clears throat> Miami time. Then Nicaragua at 9 o'clock Miami time. And then uh, we have... Uh, endoscopy uh, endonasal series with an Ecuadorian endoscopist is really we had the first couple were really good because they had really good interaction uh, they have a couple of attendings there that really uh, have great discussions I mean these guys are awesome and then uh, I've Sherian will be coming to uh, well from India, we'll be giving a lecture on cisternostomy. Oh, yeah. Cisternostomy. So, if you want to learn some about something about cisternostomy, yeah. go over to that. It'll be in English. 
And there'll be a Spanish uh, neurosurgical resident from Russia there that also speaks Spanish. Uh, oh, he's from okay. Dominican. Yeah, he's, a, he's a from, he went to the, the Russia from Dominican. Yeah, okay, that sounds good. Yeah, that some really students good. some students travel. Okay. Sounds really good. Really, really good. Yeah, you have a, a, you know a tight language. schedule, but a really good, really good schedule. Yeah, well, you know, uh, well, well, I went to school in Mexico, medical school, and, and it adds, a, adds more education to your experience being in another yeah. country and learning it another is. language. Now, how do you speak such good English? Were you raised in the States? Oh, or? Yeah, I was. I was raised in the States until I was 14 when my parents got divorced. Okay. And, yeah. you, and your mother came to, to, my, to Mexico? To Mexico, yeah. All my, um, my Mexican family is from the part of my mother, my mother's side. Oh, okay. So she's from Mexico City. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I had the um, privilege to have the education, but like primary, elementary, middle school, and junior high in the United States. And then I did, um, well, universe, well, the end of high school and university here at Mexico. Okay. No, when I went there, man, I was not used to getting the long lines for school. Yeah. <laughs> you know, registration, like the baloney. Yeah, everything. It was mm -hmm. insane. I said, this is crazy. We stand all day in the line. <laughs> and then, then you get yeah, sometimes to the front and they say, no, this is the wrong line. It's the next line. They got <laughs> Yeah, you got to get to another line. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, that just drove me crazy. Yeah. Yeah, we that's just a problem. Put up with it. We Some, just, you got yeah. to do Sometimes it. Sometimes it's every, not so efficient. Yeah. Yeah, you just put up with it. And uh, so. Uh, okay. But I, I like the experience. I live in Guadalajara. Uh, oh, very okay. nice, Guadalajara is nice. Very nice. Very nice city. Very nice. Nice city to live in. It's not expensive. Yeah. The great food. No. You know, it's just a nice place to live. And, and it has know, a lot of places to visit, like um, around. It has a lot of places to visit. Well, you know, uh, uh, it's so easy to get around down there. Yeah. Well, the buses are so great. And in Guadalajara, like I'm sure Mexico City, the buses yeah. go everywhere. They they, they do. Every, they the public transport and, goes everywhere. Yeah, they easy. You just jump on. Uh, it's really informal. Uh, I don't know mm -hmm. if you guys realize that, but it's really informal. Yeah, which it is, is nice. <laughs> which is nice. I, I can remember there'll be pretty girls at the bus stop, and and they'll go get on the bus and take their time and straighten it, and the bus driver will just take off. Yeah. And <laughs> say we don't have time to wait for that crap. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, so um, Noe just joined again. That would be. Neurosurgery. Oh, there he is. Okay. So. No, are you there? Yes, I'm here. I'm just going to start trying to go. Okay. So I think there's, yeah, still having some problems with the video and the audio. Okay. Okay, we're here.
Not too clear, no way. Yeah, yeah, it's not clear yet. No, can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can't hear you at all. No, I can hear a muffled, a muffled sound. Diane, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Yeah, how, you, I'm here. does Noe sound muffled to you? Yeah, he he's still having some problems with the audio. Okay, okay. Can you hear us? Yes, but yeah, we can't hear you, Cloudy. Okay. Yeah, we can't hear you, Cloud. The camera. The camera, yeah, the camera's doing good, but we can't hear you. It it hears like with a lot of transparency. Okay, perfect. We call master the same one, so we kind of start now. Don't do this. Let us talk to the rest of the time. No, the audio is really bad. Yeah, I I don't know if we should. We please work on it. Please work on it. We need to. Can we work on the audio? Because we're not really hearing it at all. Just give it, take a second, Noe, please. Okay, let's try to get out. But it's not very clear. It's not clear. No, it's, could you reboot? Could you, Noe, can you reboot and start the sound again? Take the plug out and put it back in. The audio is just not acceptable. It's just, we can't really understand you. Once again, you look like very very muffled. No, we we yeah, we can't hear you. There's a lot of um echo. Yeah, when you have an echo, it means there's another input coming in, picking up sound. Is there a microphone or some other microphone around? Because it's getting two inputs. That's why we're having interference. I can't hear it. We can't even hear now. We, we cannot hear Noe at all. Sorry about that. Can you you can use a smartphone for a, a microphone if you want. Yeah. Not very well, not very clearly. We can't televise like that, Diane. Yeah, yeah, no. Yeah, I mean, no. I wonder in the auditorium if it's clear. Uh, yeah, the problem is when they want to speak like in the auditorium for us, for the like for us to televise it and for Zoom. For instance, hello. Okay. Yes. Hello. Can you talk? Yeah, we can hear you, Noe. That's hello? a little better. The audio is better. Okay, all this better. We have some changes. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Yeah, we can hear you. 
¿Ya se escucha en el auditorio? Okay, so we can hear that a little bit better, but we still hear a lot of echo. Yeah, it's not clear. It's not clear. We really have to work on the audio. If, if you don't mind, uh, we, we need audio, obviously. Yeah. Can we trace the system back, Noe? But it's muffled and not, we're going to have to change yeah, no. something. Something needs to be changed. Uh, is there another microphone? Uh, another audio input? Or that is not working. No. no. Sound, is, sound is very unclear, sporadic. There's a lot of static now. We got to be firm on this because otherwise we'll be sitting here not listening to, to anything. Hello, Diana. Can you hear me? Now it's better. Yes, I can hear you. Yes. It's better. Better. Hello. But we can't see you. Yeah, we can hear you now, but we can't see you anymore. It's because I'm not in front of the camera. Oh, okay. It's that. That is okay. better. Much better. Well, well now. Can you hear okay. me? Yes. Yeah, I can better. hear you now. Yeah. Much okay. Better. Okay, so John, I think I know who is introducing Noe. Okay. Okay, you can introduce. But I'm not. I'm not. But yeah, but I'm not sure if it's him. So Let's if see. not, then I'll just introduce Noe. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be. Confused. Yeah, so just, yeah, let, let it go. Okay. Just let it go. Okay. Yeah. Channel number two, Diana. And channel number one, John. Once again, we are trying to spread this. Microphone number one. We can't. We can't understand no. what you're saying. We're There's, working. it's really with a lot of echo and static. Yeah, it's not, it's not good. I'm, I'm sorry, but we have to work on it. We'll, we'll get it. We'll get it. Keep working on it. No, no, yeah. Yeah, not very well, Noe. Not very well. It's very yeah. muffled. Very, we have to do something, Noe. I don't know what, but. Once again, with this, another microphone. Yeah. Does anybody have a smartphone? Go, go to the webcast. You can use that as an audio input. Do you know what I mean, Diane? You could use a smartphone like an. You go to the webcast. Yeah. Okay. We can hear that loud and clear. Que creo que se escucha de la compu, pero no del micrófono. O sea, como si los micrófonos no estuvieran conectados. John, hello, hello. Yeah. Not very clear. Hi, Diana. It's me. Se escucha de aquí de la compu. Hi, Memo. Hola, Diana. ¿Cómo estás? Bien, bien. Gusto saludarte. So, John, um, the person that's going to be introducing Noé is a really, really good doctor and speaker and has a great um, resume, has a great curriculum with um, auditoriums and conference and everything. He's really good. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you, Diana. Can you hear me now once again? Yeah, I can hear you, but not so loud. We need a, a little bit louder. 
Now, can it's, you hear it's me? It's clear. I'm trying to move yeah, it here, but we need... the auditorium. Once yeah. again. Th that's you... better. That's See? better, right? Yeah, that's way better. Much better. Okay. I'm going to try with this text, Primer Curso Internacional. Once again, I'm trying with the Spanish, Primer Curso yes. Internacional. Yes. Okay. It's okay? So, or... so are we ready to start recording? Okay. Once again, can you hear me? Are we... You? Yeah, we can hear you better. Okay. We start with recording. Bien. Iniciamos una sesión más de este, el primer curso internacional de neuroanatomía funcional con orientación quirúrgica, doctor Francisco Velasco Campos. Transmitiendo de las, desde la Ciudad de México a las 19 horas con 19 minutos, este 22 de septiembre de 2022, les damos la más cordial bienvenida a todos los presentes en el auditorio, doctor Aquilino Villanueva, del Hospital General de México, Nissan, de manera, de manera electrónica en la transmisión Neurosurgical TV, transmisión por Zoom, transmisión por YouTube, asimismo como en la transmisión por Facebook. También al, neuro, neuro, al equipo de Neurosurgical TV, doctor John Bennett de Estados Unidos, director de la transmisión en Norteamérica, Asia y Europa, al doctor Marco, coordinador para Latinoamérica, y a la doctora Diana Ochoa, coordinadora de logística digital. Asimismo, a nuestro panel de expertos invitados de línea, doctora Por Alux Fusogen de Tailandia, neurocirujana vascular y endovascular, Sawadji, doctor Marco Baral, de neurocirujano pediatra de Cuba, asimismo al doctor Takashi Hon, neurocir neurocirujano de Tokio, Japón, con Mangua. La primera ponencia corresponde al tema de citoarquitectura cerebral. Presenta el tema el doctor Noé Pérez Carrillo. Leeré su semblanza. Él es médico cirujano, egresado de la Facultad de Medicina de la Universidad Nacional Autónoma de México, dentro del programa de alta exigencia académica. Actualmente, Residente de Neurocirugía del Hospital General de México, doctor Eduardo Liceaga. Pasado presidente del capítulo de la UNAM de la American Association of Neurosurgical Surgeons 2017. Presidente global de la Liga de Residentes de la Walter E. Dandy Neurosurgical Society. Actualmente académico y compañero de la Facultad de Medicina de la UNAM en la Cátedra de Anatomía Humana. Algunas distinciones que tiene el doctor. Medalla Gustavo Vaz Prada. Reconocimiento al mérito, al mérito académico por la red PEA de la UNESCO. Mérito académico universitario, presea, ingeniero, Bernardo Quintana Arrioja. Medalla por tercer lugar en la Feria de las Ciencias de la UNAM. Medalla en el Concurso Nacional de Metodología de la Investigación para Residentes 2020 y medallista universitario en la Olimpiada de Cálculo Integral para Ciencias de la Salud. Asimismo, y bastante reconocido, coordinador general del primer curso internacional de neuroanatomía funcional con orientación quirúrgica, doctor Francisco Velasco Campos. Recibamos con un fuerte aplauso. Muchas gracias, Memo, gracias por la amena presentación. Una disculpa por las fallas técnicas, son cosas que a veces son inesperadas, pero suelen pasar. Voy un poco más breve para que nos dé tiempo de poner las tres charlas. El tema que les voy a presentar el día de hoy se llama Citoarquitectura Cerebral. Y este, vamos a dar algunos aspectos, vamos a decir uno de los aspectos históricos, los aspectos relevantes que todo el mundo conoce y principalmente lo que está en tema de discusión de este tema. Algunos aspectos históricos. Evidentemente no podemos hablar de la citoarquitectura cerebral si no hablamos del descubrimiento de la, eh, de la corteza cerebral. Bien es sabido que en 1906 eh, comparten el premio, Nobel, eh, el premio Nobel Camilo Golgi, así como... Santiago Ramón y Cajal, ambos españoles, por sus técnicas de inmunotensiones con, ten, con metales eh, argénticos. ¿no? Utilizaban metales de plata, algunas sales de oro, y con esa manera ellos consiguieron hacer las primeras descripciones eh, eh, de cuanto a la corteza cerebral. ¿Ellos qué hacían? Hacían la descripción neuronal, dónde se encontraban las neuronas, con eso hacían una énfasis en que ciertas áreas
Karina, ¿tiene sonido? No hay sonido. No hay, lo siento. Yeah. I'm texting him because we don't have sound anymore. Yeah. Yeah, other people said lo mismo. Yeah. No hay sonido, no hay. Okay, so I texted them, they're gonna fix it. Okay. They must have a good IT guy there, right? In Mexico uh, at the university? Uh... Yeah, it's just that, that they're at the General Hospital of Mexico. So yeah. I think that's like the, well, the auditorium problem maybe. I mean, there wasn't this problem before. So hopefully they'll, they'll get the chance to fix it. Oh, there are IT people there? Yes. Okay. I, th we, I think we, because this has been an ongoing problem. Not a major one, but you know how it bothers us now and then. I wish we could straighten it out. But I, I don't know how to yeah, do it. Yeah, hopefully it does. Yeah, no, but I mean, we'll, we'll talk to Noah after to see what's the problem in and how yeah. to solve it. Yeah, well, those guys can usually figure it out. <clears throat> yeah. But people like you and me, you know, we just do it by patchwork and trying different stuff and, and sometimes we get yeah, lucky. Um, yeah, I'm so... Okay, so they're having a problem with the computer. They restarted the computer. They're on it. So I think maybe five minutes and we'll okay. have the audio and the video again. Okay. I have a boring life, uh, Donna. So I have nowhere to go. And it's not that. It's just that we love our thursdays in the in the night we love to be present so we'll just wait for them to fix it yeah we we enjoy the conference today today during a broadcast my computer crashed you know it's just the electric and it didn't crash but the electric went out in Miami, I mean, it's supposed to be advanced yeah. and everything, but the, the because we had rain, it happens all the time when there's a rainstorm, the computer oh, goes okay. out. Yeah, the computer yeah. goes out. Well, I, I think they're having like the same problem that the computer crashed. Yeah, it's not long, five minutes, 10 minutes, maybe, but it does. And I came back to the Zoom, it was going. Like a, you can start it, but if other people get on it and they stay on it, I guess the host can leave. Because I, I left, didn't want to leave. I was kicked off by the electric uh, failure. Yeah. Well, hopefully they'll have it back on soon. And well, we can take this opportunity to thank everybody that still on with us that has patience and it's, that keeps on waiting for the lectures. We're sorry about the inconvenience, but hopefully soon we will get them back together.
That announcement was by Diana. She's a rookie. She just came on tonight working for Neurosurgical TV. I should be speaking Spanish, right, Diane? Well, we can speak Spanish or English. I mean, every like mo the majority of the people in Mexico that are in the medical field already speak well English and understand it really well. Well, you know, one thing that, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes I bring English speakers to Spanish lectures and no one seems upset. Uh, you know, people from other parts of the world, like India, will come and and uh, give it in English, but no one seems to mind. I thought they would prefer Spanish, but it seems like there's no preference. Yeah, over here too. I mean, there's no preference. Um, the majority of the people already speak English and understand really good English. Yeah. No. No. Yes. We can hear you, Noe. Bien, nuevamente, prueba de audio, uno, dos, tres. I'm trying with this audio, one, two, three. Yeah, we can hear you good. And no, we no. can see the image too. That's great. We can hear Memo no. and we can hear Noe. Okay, with okay. this microphone. Hello, Diana, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Antuna, uh, disculpa por las cuestiones técnicas. Um, comentábamos, eh, no podemos hablar de la corda cerebral y su éxito de arquitectura hasta hoy en día, si no podemos hablar de los inicios con Santiago de Ramal Cajal y Camino Gold, así como sus contemporáneos. Seis años después, seis, siete años después de que se hace la descripción de la configuración de la corteza cerebral, se hace hincapié a cuáles son las diferencias que existen en esta, esta arquitectura. Es decir, hay quien hacía un corte en la corteza este, auditiva, hay quien hacía un corte quizás en la corteza entorrenal, y vea que quizás el número de capas o la densidad celular era diferente. De ahí, Paul Bronman, así como los doctores Vox, Oscar eh, Charles Vox, en su laboratorio trabajaba el doctor Brodman en Alemania. Oh no. Uh, otra vez no se escucha el correcto mundo. No sound, no. Sorry to say. Okay, so I texted them again. They're on it. Okay. I'm going nowhere, Diane. Yeah, we'll stay here until it, it works out. Yeah.
Okay, so they sent me a text message that um, they have decided to go on and they are going to record the presentation after. So okay. we will just have to um, listen to Noe's presentation without the audio. Let me ask if um, if it's gonna be like that and then we'll just end the Zoom. I don't know, let me, let me ask him. Give me a second. We, we can just stay here and just see what happens. You know, Diane, I'm going to just stay here. We'll see what happens. And we'll wait a while. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'll just That's stay here. Asking. And maybe we'll get lucky and it'll start working. Okay. Yeah. I think we can just stay here. Let me just um, tell the, the rest of the participants. Okay. Um, I'm going to send a message in the chat and in the Telegram. Yeah, just so they can see the recording. Which they're uh, obviously doing now. Okay, so only the um, conference of NOE is going to be recorded. They are going to change the microphones for the rest of the opponents. So we'll just stay here and wait. Okay.
Jan, for some reason, I cannot um, write in the chat for everybody, only for the host and panelists. I'm not mm. sure why. I try to um, change that. But Dr. Maribel Savala, um, she wrote well, the text well, message that okay, I sent in the wait, Telegram. OK, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me. Okay. I, can, I can maybe make you a host. Hold on. Which, okay. may, which may increase your powers and then then you can give it back to me. Do you know what I mean? Uh, so let me see. Um, no, no, do. no, John, but you can't, no, not necessary host, just co-host, only co-host. I think you are co-host now, Diana. Um, uh, are I'm, you not? I don't know. No, only um, neurosurgery from the Hospital of uh, Mexico, HGMM, is co-host. So okay, just, hold, just co-host. Okay, hold on. All right, thank you. Oh. Try it now. Okay, let me try it. Yeah, everything is great. Okay, yeah, thank you.
siempre con tu voz. Going to show it to you in just a moment. Now there is Jim Jacobs, the old manager of Mike Tyson. done by three judges. The referee does not score. Scoring on the round system. Supplemental four-point uh, scoring system. If the rounds lined up even. And the three knockdown rule is in effect. Tyson comes out slugging. He comes out smoking like Marvis's father, Joe. Marvis must move or we're going to be out of here very, very quickly. going to stop the fight. It's very, very quick. Oh, Marcus must move or we're going to get it very, very quick. Father Joe, Marvis must move or we're going to get out very, very quickly. He keeps up smoking like Marvis and Father Joe. Marvis must move or we're going to get out very, very quickly. Obvious with which Tyson knocked out just a moment. Right now, there is Jim Jacobs, the old manager of Mike Tyson, talking to him. 30 second knockout sensation. Watch the right hand of Mike Tyson. Marvin in the corner and shrouded. There it was. Just flipped him right on the chin. The left was unnecessary. Marvin's family heard at this point. Uppercut again, and there Marvis is out in speed. Everything after this is just incidental. The Frazier camp and express at this point. Uppercut again, and there Marvis is out in speed. Right hand of Mike Tyson. Marvis in the corner and trapped. There it was. Just flipped him right on the chin. The left was unnecessary. Marvis family heard at this point. Uppercut again, and there Marvis is out in speed. Everything after this is just incidental. The Frazier camp had expressed confidence before the bout. Fully believe kind of an attack. You see that in the ring, kept the ring. And the good news is, I believe Marvis Frazier is to evaporate. His power, his ability to take a punch, his technique in the ring, skepticism continued to be skipped with right upper coming. that Marvis could handle this kind of an attack. You see that stiff left hand, that jab that Mike has not shown too much. The jab back, Marvis up into the corner, a second jab kept him there for those right uppercuts. There will continue to be skepticism in some quarters regarding Tyson's stamina, his ability to take a punch, his technique in the ring.
Me uní otra vez, creo que es por el micrófono, creo que ya puedo hablar. Hola, Diane, ¿estás ahí? Sí, estoy aquí. Estoy intentando ver si pueden traer el audio para la próxima conferencia. Ok, well, give it a, why not? Give it a shot. Sí. Yeah. Hola, Diane, ¿estás ahí? Sí, estoy aquí. Estoy intentando ver si pueden traer el audio para Para mí es un gran gusto dar pie a la segunda conferencia. Esta es ofrecida por el doctor José Luis Navarro Olvera. Él es médico cirujano egresado de la Facultad de Medicina de la Universidad Nacional Autónoma de México. Especialista en... El sonido es bueno. Compartir la pantalla. Por favor, compartirlo. We are sharing the screen. Share the screen. Pantalla compartida. Reiniciamos. No se preocupen, es parte del show. Nuevamente, presento al doctor. José Luis Navarro Olvera. Él es médico cirujano, egresado de la Facultad de Medicina de la Universidad Nacional Autónoma de México. Especialista en neurocirugía, egresado de esta institución, el Hospital General de México, doctor Eduardo Liceaga. Alta especialidad en neurocirugía funcional, esterotaxia y radiocirugía, aquí en convenio entre la UNAM, Hospital General de México. Tiene maestría en neurooncología, maestría en administración hospitalaria, doctorado en alta dirección, académico por parte de la UNAM, miembro del Sistema Nacional de Investigadores, jefe actual de la Unidad de Neurocirugía Funcional, coordinador de enseñanza del curso de neurocirugía del Hospital General de México, doctor Eduardo del Saga, y asimismo profesor titular de este, el primer curso internacional de neuroanatomía funcional con orientación clínica, doctor... Muy buena noche a todos ya. Espero que no haya tantos errores. <risa> Vamos a avanzar muchas cosas. Ok, ok, está bien. Adelante, ya no interrumpir, por favor. La otra es, este es un curso nacional y es importante que se presente en español. Nos tocó hace tiempo acudir a un sitio en, la, en México, en país como tal, y alguien se puso a hablar en inglés. Estamos en México, ¿de acuerdo? Entonces, lo vamos a hacer así, ¿de acuerdo? Eh, vamos a adelantar unas cosas, tienen el señalador, eh, creo que ya Noel les dio eh, un más o menos antecedente de todo lo que queremos ver, la idea es manejar eh, la correlación de las áreas funcionales 
que anteriormente se llamaban áreas elocuentes, con lo que después evolucionó a lo que se llama altamente especializado. Y después decimos, ahora son los conectomas cerebrales, como bien se mencionó por Noé, eh, ha cambiado y seguirá cambiando porque así es la medicina. Entonces, a mí me toca, me encanta mucho hacer de la neurocirugía la que implica los tumores en áreas altamente especializadas con paciente despierto. Y veremos por qué. Eh, creo que no avanza el señalador, si no me hacen favor de pasarlo. Esta es una parte muy importante de la neurocirugía, ya que eh, efectivamente un tumor intraxial que implica el tejido cerebral como tal, hace que la función cerebral se pierda, se bloquee o que la eliminemos nosotros mismos. No así los tumores extraxiales como los meningiomas, los adenomas, los fanomas, que puede implicar solamente un efecto de volumen con daño a la corteza cerebral y que una vez que retiramos ese efecto de volumen, la función se restablece. En este caso en particular, los pacientes con tumores intraxiales implica un conocimiento <coughs> atómico y neurofuncional más complejo. De ahí deriva que a veces no solamente digamos no, pues sabes que vamos a dejarlo solo presencial y ya después grabamos otra. Me parece una falta de respeto estar escuchando que están tosiendo en el foro, por favor. Me avisas cuando esté para presencial, por favor. Gracias. Eh, sobre todo por ustedes que están presenciales es una falta de respeto bueno, eh, avanzamos, ahora sí eh, no sirve este el señalador nuevamente me pasan la que sigue por favor clic es importante el conocimiento y el avance de la neurocirugía Siempre platico, sobre todo con los residentes, incluso mis maestros de cirugía general lo mencionaban y nos decían, ¿por qué te vas a ir a neuros y vas a ir a rascar un tumor más de eh, cinco o seis horas y para que dejes el paciente secuelado? Creo que una de las especialidades que más ha evolucionado en los últimos tiempos, sin duda alguna, es la neurocirugía. ¿Y por qué ha avanzado? Afortunadamente con la, el avance también del neurointensivismo, la neuroradiología, eh, incluso la neuroanestesiología, por supuesto, ha hecho que eh, la neurocirugía como tal represente una de las especialidad, especialidades que más ha avanzado en los últimos 30 años y eso implica eh, pues todo lo que ahorita veremos. ¿no? Eh, damos play por ahí. Cuando nosotros tenemos una reconstrucción de un paciente de su resonancia, lo primero que nos interesa saber, ese tumor es intraxial, es extraxial, estado del lado derecho, está del lado izquierdo, está en el óvulo frontal, en el óvulo temporal, parietal, occipital, está muy cercano a un área relevante, como sería el lenguaje, lo motor, lo visual, o incluso eh, precisamente la audición. ¿Y qué relevancia tendría para nosotros como neurocirujanos funcionales evaluar esto? Saber qué le podemos ofrecer a un paciente desde el punto de vista quirúrgico, o a veces no tocarlo, a veces solo hacer una biopsia, a veces vigilarlo o a veces ir más a, allá de una sola biopsia, intentar una resección completa que podría implicar que el paciente se cure. La siguiente, siempre y cuando a, la tendencia actual es una máxima resección, pero con máxima seguridad para todos nuestros pacientes. A, había algunos compañeros que decían, pues si vas a quitar un tumor, quítalo, aunque dejes al paciente muy mal. Y creo que las tendencias actuales no son esas. En ocasiones eh, hay tumores que es muy evidente diferenciarlos del tejido cerebral normal, como lo vemos aquí, pero en ocasiones ni siquiera sabemos cuando abrimos la capa que envuelve el cerebro, que es la dura madre, por dónde empezar, si hago un abordaje transgiral, transcortical o transulcal, por aquí, por acá, donde no, y es donde queda pues, esa duda cuando tomamos el microscopio, siempre les pongo esta imagen porque la que sigue, deseamos a veces que alguien se acerque con nosotros y nos diga, ¿Sabes qué? Empiezale por aquí, ya vamos viendo qué va sucediendo. Para eso, vamos dándole más rápido, Noé, por favor. Eh, pues ya unos avances, desde hace mucho tiempo se conoce de la cirugía craneal que se hace con paciente despierto. Eh, este está en el Museo del Prado, es la extracción de la piedra de la locura. Vamos a avanzar, eh, sería bueno que lo lean de repente. Eh, lo que ya mencionó eh, Noé, un poquito de la citoarquitectura, que no viene con 
Brodman, él fue alumno de los Bock, precisamente, el esposo, esposo y esposa. Y bueno, toda esta teoría, damos otro clic, por favor, en la cual ha ido evolucionando. También tuvimos el antecedente de la fascia de Broca, que actualmente ya no es necesario tener ahí eh, algunos eh, estudios como la eh, prueba del test de oclusión con balón. Ahora ya con la resonancia magnética funcional o alguna otra que se hace mucho en neurocirugía funcional, se llama la escucha dicótica, podemos determinar si la dominancia hemisférica para el lenguaje es izquierda o derecha, sin necesidad de ser tan invasivo como la administración de tiopental a través de la carótida. ¿no? Pasamos eh, eh, la otra, igual los aportes que hizo Bernick sobre eh, el área que se encarga del lenguaje sensitivo, recuerden que a veces consideramos que había dos fases nada más del lenguaje, lo motor y lo sensitivo y la comunicación entre esos dos eh, áreas a través de un fascículo, Decíamos, ese es el lenguaje, la, lo que se sabe actualmente es que es algo más complejo que solo decir el área de Broca, el área de Bernick y el fascículo que comunica estos dos, es mucho más complejo, por eso es que funcionamos como conectomas. La que sigue, eh, incluso la tendencia actual es hacer resonancia magnética transcraneal para estimulación de algunas áreas que pueden estar deficientes en algunos pacientes, beneficiando la función. O sabemos también que algunos tumores de bajo grado o de crecimiento lento podrían hacer que el cerebro se reorganice y a lo mejor anatómicamente ese tumor está en el giro frontal ascendente, o sea, pensando en el homúnculo motor, pero la función se preserva. Entonces decimos, ¿por qué? Si el tumor está en esa zona, la función está conservada. ¿Por qué es? Porque el cerebro se reorganiza y puede tener la capacidad de que esa área funcional migre. Así es como lo llamábamos antes. Entonces, esto fue muy interesante porque Víctor Horsley empezó a estimular la corteza motora de algunos simios y se dio cuenta que al estimular el homúnculo motor, que hoy conocemos muy bien, el, el simio tenía respuesta contralateral. De ahí derivó lo que actualmente utilizamos en la neurocirugía con paciente despierto o sin paciente despierto, de estimulación para hacer mapeo cortical transoperatorio y definir las áreas funcionales de lo que sería un tumor. La que sigue, por favor. Eh, todo esto que ya se mencionó lo vamos a pasar para que no perdamos tiempo. Me interesa muchísimo eh, presentarle los casos clínico-quirúrgicos. Cuando eh, realizamos cirugía con paciente despierto, para la cirugía de, pele, de epilepsia que se requiere electrocorticografía, eh, la estimulación se profunda en Parkinson, algunas lesiones vasculares que tienen territorios vasculares, claro que sí, procedimientos menores como biopsias por esertaxia, ventriculotomía o endoscopía cerebral y le damos otro clic, por supuesto que está indicadísimo para los tumores que están en áreas, como les decía, elocuentes anteriormente, altamente especializados o áreas relevantes o conectomas importantes. La que sigue... Eh, ¿Cuál es el objetivo de hacer esto? Porque incluso hay una pelea entre los norteamericanos con la escuela de los europeos que dice, sobre todo el francés Dufo, que dice, yo sigo operando a los pacientes despiertos porque nosotros no somos una función. Cuando nosotros estamos despiertos, tenemos todos los eh, sentidos activados y funcionamos de manera integral. No somos algo que se mueve, algo que escucha o algo que habla. Entonces, ese es el objetivo de hacer esto, pero también, ¿para qué aumentar el grado de resección? con máxima seguridad para el paciente, preservar al máximo la función, como dice aquí, y a su vez, también hemos visto que al operar el paciente sin anestesia general, puede 